mic night at Triad Church. So I thought I'd come by and give it a shot. Pastor Todd said he didn't have a message tonight. Um, some of you guys know me, some of you don't. My name's Jason. Uh, if you don't know me, you, you know my wife who sings over here. Um, she's my favorite singer. But I'm a little bit biased. Uh, this is my first time speaking in front of uh, this capacity of a crowd. Um, it's only awkward if we make it. Um, we've only got to get through 15 to 20 minutes, so let's see if we can do this. Uh, why am I up here? Um, a little while back, Pastor Dan, after our mission trip, we went to Bangladesh earlier in January. He asked me, he said, hey, you want to speak at 3D Cafe? I said, absolutely. Not. No. Never. Not going to do it. And so I left, uh, left it well enough alone, and uh, he did too. And lo and behold, Pastor Dan, the good man he is, asked me a couple months ago, hey, would you want to speak at 3D Cafe? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Uh, but, the God, but God has a funny way of working. And as I was saying, I wasn't going to do it. I knew what I was going to speak about. Um, and God's timing is perfect. So I texted him about a week later and said, yes, I'll do it. Uh, unfortunately, I had about a couple of months uh, to get ready for it, so that's not a good thing. I get a little nervous about it. Um, but Paul states in 1 Corinthians 9.16 that he was compelled to preach. He says, for when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I'm compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And that's how I felt. Last time, when we were in Bangladesh, that was the last time I spoke. We are on the plane ride over there. Once again, Pastor Dan asked me to do a short devotional. Never been over there. Uh, they got a school over there with kids. And I told them that I would do it. Uh, I figured it was harmless and innocent. And uh, so I was perfect preparing for a short devotional for these kids and I had a little message put together um, and God as he does changed my plans to his plans and he said you know I want you to preach on Jonah cliche right I'm going to preach to the kids we're going to talk about Jonah they all know the story but it wasn't so much about Jonah and the well as it was the calling of Jonah and so we get in there to do this uh, devotional and um Sarah, Sarah Morgan, who's Pastor Dan and uh, Patty's daughter, she was doing the devotional too. So we had both had them do them that night. And so she spoke first. And I had no idea what she was talking on. And her devotional was also in the call of God. And it was really good. <laughs> and I was like, why didn't I go first? You know, wait to the last. And um, so I got up there and speak. And uh, we had the opportunity to speak through a translator, which, believe it or not, is actually a lot easier because you can collect your thoughts in between while they were speaking. Um, but it was amazing, and it was a good decision. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about tonight is, is decisions that we make. Um, lots of times they affect us, and they affect people around us. Has everybody seen or thrown a rock into water? What's it do? Sinks. Right, but before it does that, you have the immediate splash, and then you have the ripples around it. Depending on the size of rock, depends on the splash and the ripples around it. Um, those rocks reflect our decisions, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Uh, the ripples of, are the effects that those decisions have on people around us. Uh, those can be immediate. Those can be from one week down the road, they can be years down the road, they can be generations down the road. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, one of my favorite characters in the Bible, uh, most people are going to question this, but uh, I want to talk about Lot. Lot we first see in Genesis 11, and he makes an abrupt departure from the Bible in Genesis 19. Uh, most of you know the story or heard of his wife turned into the pillar of salt. Uh, on the way out of Sodom and Gomorrah when God destroys the city. Uh, real quick, everybody know what an acronym is? 
word or phrase that stands for something. So, if, so for all the adults in here, I'm sure you know what that is, but for the kids, I'll go ahead and uh, explain that. So an acronym would be like IED. So the military people in here, IED, improvised explosive device. How about ID? Some of you may, some of you guys might know this one. Identification. Officer, I don't have it. <laughs> Did you know there's an acronym for lot? Look over there. Some of you guys are going to catch that on the way out. Uh, lot was the son of Heron, and Heron was uh, the brother of Abram. Abram is soon to be Abraham. God has not changed his name yet. Uh, this happens in Genesis 17, 5. God makes a covenant with him and promises to make him the father of nations and eventually stating his offspring will be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Now that's a guy that I want to follow. And this is a guy that Lot wanted to follow. Abraham was Lot's uh, newfound father, his um, his righteous uh, leader. So when Haran died, Abraham got the call from the Lord. Why did they move? God told Abraham to move and go to the land of Canaan because he was going to make him a great nation. And this is where we start to see Lot's decision making. And it specifically mentions uh, Lot in these verses. Genesis verse 12. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Not many places in the Bible where it specifically mentions uh, people's decisions like this. So they left and went to the land of Canaan that the Lord had promised them. And how many times that the Lord promises us something when we get there, it's not the way or what we think it's going to be. When they get there, there's a, uh, there's a severe drought. This is the land that the Lord promised them. They go there, there's a drought. And, you know, when you get there with the Lord's promises, things are not always, as my wife says, unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> So Lot and Abraham decided to move down to Egypt. And while they were in Egypt, they acquired great wealth. Great wealth. Uh, herds, people, um, to avoid the famine. And while they were... Sorry, I've got a couple pages here. This is my first time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so once they acquired this great wealth, Abraham decided to move back up to the land of Canaan where the Lord had promised them. So it says in Genesis 13, 1, Abraham went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had. Lot's next decision. And Lot went with him. Specifically mentions it in 13, 1. Um, so when they get back to Canaan, they both acquired great wealth. They had herds, people, and then quarreling, quarreling started to begin between them. Uh, Abraham said to Lot, let's separate before we have uh, blood between the brothers. And he said, if you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. So Lot surveyed the land. His next big decision. What's he going to do? He sees the plain of Jordan. And while he's in the plain of Jordan, he sees that it's well watered, well, well fertile. And he chooses to go that direction. His eyes told him which way to go. But what he didn't know was the spiritual condition of the land. This was the land of Sodom. This was the land of Gomorrah. So Lot left, and he set his tent up to face Sodom. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Bad company corrupts good character. It says that in the Bible that Lot was a man of righteousness. Years later, um, we find Lot living in Sodom. His intentions weren't to live in Sodom initially, but he was vexed by the people. His righteousness led him into the city, but again, bad company corrupts good character. So while they were there, Sodom and Gomorrah were, uh, had kings, and they rebelled against the king that they were vassal states of another king. I'm not going to get into that. It's a long story. But this king came, uh, once they rebelled, the king came down, and uh, he basically defeated them in battle. He took all their goods and took some of the people. Lot was one of them. Abraham heard of this situation. 
So when he does, he has 300, gets 314 of his men, basically destroys them all, tracks them down, rescues Lot back. Lot's next big decision. What does he do? He goes back to Sodom. How many times do we get pulled out of a bad situation or decision and when we get the chance, we go back to that same place? The Lord desires us to live full of His promises. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Not to return back to your place of rescue. So many times we find that's the easiest choice. Lot doesn't just go back to Sodom. He becomes ingrained in Sodom. He becomes one of the gatekeepers. Now we all know that the sins of Sodom have reached the Lord and he sent his angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham begged if there was only so many righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah to save him. And he argued with them. And he got down to ten people and said if there is ten people, ten people of righteousness, we will not destroy the city. So the angels went. They're met at the gate by Lot. Lot's one of the gatekeepers. This is a very important position in that time. That allows, that's trusting who comes into the city and who leaves the city. Lot brings him to his house. And while these angels are in this house, the people of Sodom come banging to him on the door. Send them out. Send them out. Let us have our way with them. Lot says, please, please know they're guests in my house. What does he do? He says, take my two daughters. Have your way with them. Leave these men alone. Bad character. Bad company corrupts good character. Sometimes that's where we find our, our place. Our intentions are good. But the situations and the people we're around is corrupting us. So the angels blind the people. And he says, go find anybody. Tell them the city's going to be destroyed. He couldn't find anybody. His son-in-laws, they laughed at him. So he takes his daughter, two daughters and his wife. And he's going to leave, but he hesitates. And the angels said, get out now. He doesn't want to leave his life. He wants to stay where he's at. Sometimes we don't want to change. We like it where we're at. But that's not what God desires for us. So God was going to destroy the city. He sent them out. And Lot said, Lord, do not send me to the mountains, for I surely, surely will die. Help me, Lord. I do not want to change. Do not send me here. The Lord hears him and rescues him again and says, I will send you to the city of Zor, which is not far away, small town. You go here. The Lord offered and listened to Lot and gave him a place of refuge. We have to choose to stay in that place of refuge. So when they left, who was the first person out of there? Lot. Who was behind him? His two daughters. Who was behind his two daughters? His wife. He left his family behind. Now many theologians uh, have different theories about why his wife turned to a pillar of salt. Whether she missed the life that she had um, and desired to be back in Sodom and didn't want to leave. Maybe Lot wasn't there for her. So they get to the city of Zor. His wife's turned to a pillar of salt. And while he's there, in his place of refuge that God provided to him, he says, I will surely die. Lord, I will surely, surely die. So what does he do? He runs away. His place of refuge, the place that God offered him. Sometimes we don't see that. So he runs away. He takes his two daughters and they run off into a cave. I 
have two more points here to finish up in conclusion. How does this apply to us? What's the application? Point number one, don't give up. This is where the devil wants us. And the devil had Lot right where he needed him. Alone, isolated, in the cave. Lot's decisions, or his next decision, just like the rock in the water, affects Israel for generations to come. Lot has incestual relationships with his daughters, and he doesn't know it. He gave his decision-making ability over to something else. Sometimes when we allow things into our body, uh, decisions are made for us. We lose that decision. We lose that choice. And this is what happened. Uh, that decision created the Ammonites and the Moabites, two of the worst people groups in Israel. These, these two groups introduced um, human sacrifice, child sacrifice. These are two of the people groups that the Israelites, when they came out of uh, 400 years of uh, slavery, had a defeat when they were going back into Israel. Our decisions affect others. And the last point, God never gives us more than we can bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide you a way out so that you may endure it. God sees you where you're at. He desires you to live the life that he created for you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me share. Pastor Tom.